Yeah. It's DJ Gloss from Sound Fusion Radio. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. This is Thelma Houston from Los Angeles. <laughs> Hi, Thelma. How, oh, it's lovely to hear your voice. Absolutely wonderful. Oh. oh, well, thank you very much. It's good to hear yours, too. Good, good. So you're in Los Angeles right now, are you? Oh, yes. I'm, I'm here right this minute. This is, this is where I live. Wonderful. What's the weather like there? Well, for us, I was just having a talk with Chip. It's cold for us. It's like, you know, I'm used to 70, you know, 70. Ooh. So it's like in the 40s and and wow. 30s at night. So and, mm. and in some places, even colder. So it's we're having a, a bit of a, a, you know, a change for us, which is, like which is kind of nice in a way. We have to wear our little heavy sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're um, we're about 36 degrees Fahrenheit here in London at the moment. So uh, it's quite cool. It, Oh yes, I, I I would imagine. But you know, you expect that in London, though, wouldn't you? I mean, this time this time of the year, especially, you know. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah that would yeah. be a doubt. And it was quite misty this morning um, through uh, through London town. Uh, it was quite a misty morning. So uh, there we go. So uh, has it snowed? It snowed. Well, it has. It snowed yet? It has, huh? No, we haven't had any snow as yet. But we're fingers crossed that we we won't get any because everything th- comes to a complete standstill in London when it snows. We're, we're no good with yeah. the snow here. We're absolutely yeah. useless with snow. So uh, there we go. <laughs> Do you mind if yeah. I um, if I start asking you uh, a few questions? Is that okay? I don't mind at all. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, the first question I was going to ask you uh, is, what are your earliest musical memories of a child? My earliest musical memories as a child would probably be listening to uh, the radio. Um, when I was a little girl, um, and uh, and being with my grandmother, uh, that's who um, came to live with us, with my mom and I. When I guess when when I was about maybe three, so I remember listening to the radio. I remember um, uh, singing along. You know, my my grandmother really liked Mahalia Jackson, so I would I would, would sing Mahalia Jackson songs along with her on the radio, <laughs> and uh, and then um, you know that's my earliest memories is hearing music on the radio and singing along, and and of course they listen. My grandmother listened to gospel music most of the time. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm-hmm. So so um, when and sort of how did the the idea of music be in a career? come to you when did that sort of happen well uh, I'd always uh, like I said since a little girl singing and and then uh, when when the lady who was kind of like a babysitter for me kind of before my grandmother came I remember her uh, saying you know letting me sing the hymns and stuff uh, practice with her. She was a Sunday school teacher, yeah. and I liked yeah. the attention that I got from. But I think that probably to think of it as being a way to make a living didn't occur to me until I was in junior high school, and there was a uh, a high school, a junior high, uh, our junior high school principal. His name was Buck Catlin, mm-hmm. and he was just one of those. Uh, teachers, or, or you know, like he was the principal, but uh, and, but he was also like the coach for the boys' track teams and 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 all those kind of things. But he was just so motivating, and if he saw um, that a child had particular um, you know talent in a particular area, he would really encourage you. And it wasn't just all about the singing or. Or, or um, you know, being an athlete, mm-hmm. he was just, you know, and this was like way back in the day, you know, and uh, when I mean, this is, you know, how teachers uh, at that particular school was in Long Beach is where I grew up. Okay. Uh, once we moved from Mississippi, and uh, and he, they used to have this talent show every year that was sponsored by the PTA, and and they would they would do this uh, in the spring of the year they would do like a weekend like a of a, uh a, a, a Friday or Saturday Friday or <laughs> Saturday night yeah. and they would raise you know they would raise money 
uh, mm-hmm. for the PTA to and the you know to give to kids who needed extra lunch money or to go on trips or whatever um, that was needed in the school. And so um, they had uh, so for the three years that I was there. Um, I auditioned one year. Someone suggested to the to him that I try out, and uh, he had me to come in and sing, and I did. And he had me to sing, you know, on the piano uh, as he played the, played the piano, and I sang. And then the second year, I did something with the orchestra. And then the third year, there I was the uh, the star of the talent show, and uh, and so it was just from that. And he really told me he says you know tell me you know if you really take care you know if you don't mess up in school and you you know you do well and and you know you 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 know i think you could really have a career you know singing i said you really think so i said really he says yeah i said he says you are you you have it he says you could really you know make make a living and so i i i took it to heart i believed him and so from that point on from that point from junior high school through you know high school i didn't really know how i was going to do it because at mm-hmm. that time there wasn't a lot of uh you know like performing arts schools and that kind of thing in you know in our area like in california you know in long beach actually um, so, uh, I mean, now there's probably one on every, not every corner, but, <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's a little like everybody is every, you know, everybody's, you know, everybody's a star. And everybody's a, but anyway, he, uh, I, you know, I, um, it, it just became, that's how I, that's, that's how, that's how the idea came about. Wonderful film. What a beautiful story. And so lovely that that, uh, principal took such an interest. That's, that's just a beautiful thing. How lovely. Yeah, it is. It is true. And you, and you know, uh, what's amazing to me, it's a, to to speak more about him is, um, I I do a show, uh, was doing a show rather, um, in Seattle, Washington, and it was a show uh, that was done. It was almost it was like a combination of theater. It was called this. It was called Teatro Zanzani, and and it was a dinner, um, cab. It was a combination of Cirque. Uh, cabaret and dinner now and it was done in this it was a beautiful venue it was done in this beautiful spiegel tent uh, and i was uh i you know with with uh um i was the uh the main character they're called Madame Zanzani, and so people you know come there for you know for anniversaries because it's a very expensive you know places like like you know like an evening is easily two three hundred dollars you know for you know an evening to start um so but anyway he um uh, i was performing one night and these ladies came up to me they sent a note back to me said buck catlin was our dad and i (gasps) and they kid they i met them and those so those were his children his you know this grown-up children and they were telling me that how their father and one of them said you know we used to we at first we were so jealous of our dad and and the time that he would spend away from us and you know at home she says but when we realize and we see the people like the people that he has um, you know, had a hand in, you know, in, in, in their development. He, he says, they said it makes us so proud. And uh, that, that was so good to hear, you know, coming from his children. So that was the kind of man that he was. And I, I just wished that, that we had more dedicated, you know, teachers yeah, like definitely. that because it, it would make such a difference. And I, and I, and I think in our young people, that it's needed so much. Definitely, and that's not just in the USA, film, and that's worldwide. We have exactly the same situation here in the UK. Really? Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. For some reason, I didn't. For some reason, I, I guess I'm just. I wouldn't think that there would be a big problem. I wouldn't think that you'd have those kinds of issues there. But I guess, I guess, like you said, it's worldwide. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, there doesn't seem to be the dedication that um, there was back in the day. That's that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah without yeah. A doubt. So your first signing was with Capitol Records, and your first hit, 1967, with Baby Mine. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. So and I and I understand that that's a that's still a a, a song that's um, that's being played in in Northern uh, London, and you know, not in London, but Northern England. 
Yeah, there's a, a Northern Soul um, sort of following here in, in the UK. Yeah. It's still pretty big. And uh, yes, uh, that, that particular tune does get played in, in those circles. And um, and I do go to some That's of those fantastic. gigs. That's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. I do go to some Northern Soul gigs. I'm, I, I have DJed a couple of times at, at Northern Soul parties, but um, I, it's not my speciality. But uh, uh-huh. I, I do get invited from time to time, and I do like to go. And they have some very energetic dances, so um, it, it's good fun. Yeah, yeah. And uh, marvellous to uh, to take part in that as well. So what was it like working with um, Capital? Because you're alongside people like Nat King Cole and Nancy Wilson and, and later on the Beatles. I mean, what was that like? Well, um, actually, um, I was working with... Uh, now, that's a, an odd story because I was uh, working um, with a gospel group called the Art Reynolds Singers. Mm. And um, we were probably one of the first, like, um, gospel groups to, that were that recorded with uh, mainstream, um, pop, uh, uh, you know, um, musicians. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, like uh, studio top, top studio musicians, uh, particularly out here in California. Nice. And um and so uh um the guy that was producing that uh producing our first uh thing his name was Gary Paxton. Mm-hmm. And Gary Paxton was actually the producer of it and that, and Gary Paxton leased it to Capitol Records. We did very we did most of most of the recording for our first album was done in an old bus that Gary Paxton had converted into a recording studio. Wow. He had all the, like the, all of the, you know, engineering equipment. I was just thinking about that yesterday, just in comparison, in com- comparing that to the way Gay, uh, the janitor and I did our project, uh, yes, that we're yeah. going to, uh, the 42 project. It's such a difference. Back then, um, you know, it was those big old real things, you know, tape and, and, and you would record, you know, all your different, tracks on this one big old wide yeah. tape and 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 the bus was like I said the engineering was like the studio and we recorded in in you know like in his you know in a in a house in a that he had converted into you know had a, a part of it uh you know for the for the recording sound wonderful <laughs> For the vocals, and so uh, anyway, he yeah it was through Gary Paxson who leased it to to Capitol Records, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then uh, I did that Baby Mind single, and then nothing really happened. You know, I didn't, I had no management. I mean, no real management, no connect, nothing to really uh, guide it. You, you know, but by now the recording, I mean, and and knowing that this is what I wanted to do was had really started to get into my blood because I'd I'd had a taste of it. Uh when the Art Reynolds singers, we were we were invited to uh, because of that one album. The album um it produced two hits, not not necessarily by us, but we, but it was our but it was our song yes. and it was uh it was later it was uh um, done by uh, the Doobie Brothers. It was called "Jesus Is Just All Right with Me," mm-hmm. yes, and yeah, uh, yeah. they had a hit on it. And then another gr- another group called the Birds had a hit called "Glory, Glory, Hallelujah," which was also off that same album. So we were a little bit before our time, but uh, uh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so uh, we 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 were uh, asked to come back to. Uh, Philadelphia and uh, appear on one of those big radio shows that that will have like uh, you know all the top acts uh, you know on the you know on the radio show and then nice. but then they may have like an early morning gospel show you know uh, you know like early early and so because uh, uh, you know we because we had a our record was kind of you know new and innovative and and being played around we got invited to go back so I was on the on the bill with all these you know, um, people like Patti LaBelle and the Blue Bells, and yeah. <laughs> I can't remember who else. And but it was a, those kinds of it. I said, oh, and it was my oh my god, it was in my blood. So, but then it was 
you know, a few years later until I actually went back in again and did the Sunshara album, which was on ABC Dunhill. Yes. And then from there to Motown and blah, 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 blah. Yes. <laughs> wonderful. What, what a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful story. I love the bus thing. Absolutely amazing. You know, we yeah. would never get to know that without talking to you. What a what a wonderful, wonderful piece of information that, you know, that's just mm. lovely. And Motown, so what was it like with Motown, the, the massive Motown? I mean, everybody in the UK, when you hear the word Motown, they go, <gasps> Motown. You oh, know? I know, <laughs> I know. Everybody's heart just, you know, um, well, uh, when, I, when I joined, uh, uh, signed to Motown, um, it was after they had left Detroit, and they had moved to Los Angeles. Yes. Yeah. And I actually first signed with what was called Mo West, which was Motown, but on the West Coast. So that lab- that new label at that time was called Mo West. Yeah. But later, Mo West kind of dissolved, and 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 we the artists that were on that label who was. Myself, I think maybe Sarita, Sarita Wright. Uh, I'm trying to think who else may have been on Mo West. Um, maybe Tata. I'm not sure if all the artists at that time that was on yeah. Mo West. But anyway, eventually, you know, I became on, on. I was on Pamela, then I was on Motown. So, but uh, I'm. T- it was. It was a. It was. For me, it was like being in. I don't know, a fantasy or something, because I, at, you know, when I was living in Long Beach and I was having these dreams or, or these uh, aspirations of becoming a singer and not really knowing how to get there or what steps to take, out of Detroit were people my own age who were making music, who were you know you could hear them on the radio you could mm-hmm. hear so it just seemed to me that was so distant and i kept saying i should be in detroit i should be in detroit you know and yeah. i just yeah. and i um and so so our our paths were going in in a particular direction but they were different paths so when i finally did get get on the label and we're and we're we're meeting these people, like the Smokies, like the Diana Ross, and mm-hmm. and wow. you know and 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 you know and uh, seeing you know Marvin Gaye. This was before Marvin Gaye left the label. Um, seeing um, oh I don't know all of these people. You know the Four Tops uh, going out working opening for the Four Tops. Uh, opening for the Temptations on big shows in Japan, and so, I mean it was amazing. like an opening for Smokey Robinson at Carnegie Hall, and wow. you know, and being produced by Stevie Wonder, even though he never finished it, it never came out. But still, <laughs> but still, you know, being in their presence, it was just like I was, I was, you know, on the one hand, and then having them, you know, say that they admire, you know, they like my music because they knew about the sunshine album that I had done uh, previously and so it was just amazing and and when they when they first came to to Los Angeles it was it was in a building it was at 64 64 Sunset Boulevard and mm-hmm. you know and Fine everything was in that Boulevard. one you know place except for the recording studio which was over on Romaine but you would just at, at one time or another either in that building or either at the recording studio you're going to be running into these people you know, Fantastic. I mean, my son would come over. I'd be recording in the studio. My son was, you know, was young and, you know, and uh, sometimes like maybe in the summer, he'd come with me to the studio and, you know, he'd be, I'd be recording and he'd be in the out side across the street from the recording studio they had tennis courts and they had basketball courts and so he would be over there sometimes playing you know basketball with the jacksons while i'm in the studio recording or he would go hang out with the commodores and hear them doing their stuff and so you know it was just it was it was just just wonderful um, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience, and um, just ab- about maybe what two weeks ago, I was asked by um, Iris Gordy, whose 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 father was 
Fuller Gordy. Yeah. And Fuller Gordy and Barry Gordy were brothers. Yes, Fully, right. Fuller Gordy was one of the executives, one of the administrators on the label, and he's passed away. He's been passed away for some years now, yes. but every uh, on his birthday, they do a fundraiser, and so I was asked to uh, do this fundraiser for them. So I saw everyone. I saw Barry. I saw I was. I saw. You know Sherry mm-hmm. Payne. Sherry Payne used to be one of the Supremes. Does uh, one of the was you know replaced Cindy in the Supremes, and she does the yes. Supremes shows. So I'm you know and and just it's just still wonderful to see everybody again. And 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 every time I see them, it's you know it's a wonderful experience. So it was yeah. really good. Wonderful. Oh, that's that's such a lovely story. Thank you, thank you, Thelma. That's just just beautiful to to share to share stories like that. Just absolutely great. Because you're quite um, you're quite big in uh, charity and charitable events, aren't you? You did um, um, you have Thelma Houston Day, don't you, or something? Oh, you've had Thelma Houston Day. Well, uh, they people do that to to honor you for for certain you know, commitments or certain things that you have. I've been doing a lot of, had been doing a lot of charity work for AIDS, AIDS research, yes, AIDS, right. any kind of program related to, to AIDS, uh, starting with that. from I, I do, I, I, I go where people need me or ask me to do things. I feel that that's a part of, of, of it, you know, that's a part of giving back. Um, um, and so... I've done a like like a lot of things for like I said the eight for the uh gay community and for the now the uh l g uh, you know lesbian gay transgender um you know um uh organizations i do right do uh, things for the human rights organization i've done i'm doing um you know things for the n w a c p for children and children education but also uh there's a, a large need uh for edu- more education and more uh, information getting to black young women now who are who are being affected by the aids yes. virus yeah really bad really badly so there's still a need for it so yes i do uh try to lend my voice to 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 things you know you don't you know uh you know for for uh things that i believe in that i do also things for there's a charity that i uh that i do um uh there's a, a lady that i know she's a doctor a dermatologist and she does a uh uh, her, she has a, a nonprofit for children with, uh, like, uh, vitiligo. You know, for the yes. lighting of your face, yes, yes, and so yes. foster children. Um, they, you know, they're when the state does not feel that those kinds of things are a necessary item, so they don't get help for those kinds of problems. Which is when you're a teenager or a young person a in thing. particular. That you're very sensitive about how, about your looks, so it is it is very important. But anyway, she does she has these clinics at different schools, and that she does uh, helps children with that. And also in the summer, because foster children are separated usually a lot they're, from their siblings. Yes. In the summer, she does a program for for uh, for two weeks where the siblings can get together with their with with each other and and go to camp for two weeks. I think that's a wonderful thing to do and so so i try to give time to that uh you know so beautiful what a lovely uh, yeah. thing what a yeah lovely thing. <laughs> it's just so nice to uh to hear that and um i wanted to uh, ask you about the the 42 project we've got um right, got some right. tunes from that um oh i'm so excited about that yeah because we got enemy <laughs> and land lover and uh, the surreal deal and colorblind and when the party's over wonderful tunes can you can you tell us a little bit about it well here's the thing uh the person, his name is Janitor. He calls him. That's his his work name is Janitor, but his name is his name is Gabe, and he and I were both asked to do yet another charity event <laughs> <laughs> for um, for an animal shelter up in uh, in Sonoma County. Well. Sonoma County is a lovely. That's the wine country, right? So it's very lovely up there, anyway. So. Yes, yes. 
um, we were asked to do this. Uh, he was called as a side musician, and I was asked to sing in it. And so that's how we, we met. And I I really, uh, his playing was just fantastic on this show where we only had like a, you know, a day, uh, you know, to rehearse and then do the show the next day. Um, and uh, But he had a wonderful sense of humor. <laughs> and when you do these kinds of shows, especially, you know, people, you spend a lot of time like backstage hanging out with people talking and stuff. And I liked his sense of humor and stuff. And I had been wanting to, to I had said that the next project that I put out, you know, I, I just really want to have more of an input in it, meaning not just the producing of it and not just, you know, I want to, you know, have a hand in the writing of it. And I, and, and, but I hadn't really found, um, I had done, I have done some writing, but it's, it's difficult to find, to click with writers. You know what I mean? It's, it's a, it's a certain kind of, um, yeah relationship that has to take place there yet yeah, first has to be trust and then the other thing is is that i don't really play an instrument so sometimes when i'm singing the melody of what i'm hearing uh somebody else can add a note here and take away a note there and it becomes something totally different yeah. and I, because i can't correct it then i end up doing what they're playing and it's not what i'm hearing in my head you know what i mean it's not what you visualized i get it yeah yeah definitely. exactly exactly yeah. but when so uh so that's kind of thing. Like, so anyway i i asked gabe at that meeting at at that time would he you know would he be interested in doing some collaboration and he said he'd love to and so he we left that gig and I went on tour and he went on tour. We got back together. That was like in the fall yes. and we got back together um in the January of the following year and just started working and it just it just just popped. It just really popped. And the the name is is of it of it is forty two because that's the difference in our ages. Right. And I was going to ask where that came from. Actually, I was, I, I was right. Yeah, but the, but the thing is, is that um, he uh, we realized, and and not that not, not that this was something that was our intent to do at the beginning. Like we're gonna let's get together and see if an older person and a younger person can write together. It, that's not how it was approached. We just said we get together and write. But once we did get together and we start coming up with with these material uh and 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 I'd have an idea and he would know how to follow he would yeah. you know he could say yeah I get that he'd have an idea and I said yeah right I get that and you know and so we realized that there you know that gen that, that generation gap thing there th there's no such thing I mean Absolutely. really there there are always certain things like integrity trust love things that are really real that you can agree on those Absolutely. things there's there's always some way to find agreement and so we said wow this is really good and 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 then and then the music is just i i just i'm just so excited about it uh about the project and um happy at how it came you know how it is coming together and um you know and what you know the result of this was i'm very excited about it Wonderful. Well, we've had the tunes from it on on rotation now for a couple of weeks and um, been playing them. So uh, it's it's been great, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you about it. And uh, well, I mean, it, it's, I been, it's been received well. Yes, definitely. Yeah, been received oh, very fantastic. well. Oh, fantastic! Um, you know, we're we're putting those tunes through, and the other um, tunes that get received very well are from your 2007 album, the the covers album. Um, there's some some beautiful tunes on there as well, and you know that. They also get extremely well received. You know the, um, the the sort of covers. A woman's touch. Yes, that's the one. Yeah. Um, you, yeah. You did the cover yeah. Of, oh, uh, thank you. Harold Melvin now that and was the Blue my Nights. first. Yeah. Now that was my yeah. first. Um, like stepping out more with the production because Peter Angel, the 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 producer of of that. Uh, he and I. He he's very. We 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 communicate really well together as well. Uh, for doing that kind of you know. And uh, so that was that was a good project. Wonderful. We had we had fun doing that too. Um, I mean, I love Motown. Love you know every other label. It was great. In one way, I really miss that uh, you know that that kind of uh, 
when you work work on a project, you know, you know, hopefully, well, when a record company really gets behind something that you yes. do, there's nothing like it, promotion and, you know, the whole thing. But on the but the other side of that is they they have a lot of input into what you do. Yes. You know yeah. what I mean? They have yeah. a lot. Well, we don't like that. We don't think that's going to go over or maybe you should change that or you know you should add this to that uh take that away no nobody's going to hear that you know what i mean yes. and i and, and 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 to to not have to deal with that with that kind of uh and said you know what we're going to go we're going to we're going to you know if i think when it's real if if something is real and if people can can feel it uh, and 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 you know then then they'll then then they'll 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 support you in that, you know what I mean? Definitely. Uh, and and then and I think that every at 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 some point everybody finds their own, you find your own groove, you find your own uh, following, you have your own, you know, people that that uh, you know. So there's room out there. You don't. Nothing has to be. I mean, everything doesn't have to be massive and and trillions and jillions and and huge. Huge, huge, huge! You know, you can you can just keep focus and keep staying yourself and staying true. And over the long run, yes. over the long run, which is which is what counts. Longevity is what counts. And so, if you can build and build and build and be truthful and honest in your in your work, uh, it, you know, I think you can be able to do it, and you'll have your following and live, what, you know, and to the degree that you want to do it. Wonderful. For as long as you want to do it, and that's 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 the way that I look at it. You know, when you're at a record label, everything yo, you gotta be, it's gotta be number one. We gotta what what was our numbers last week, and mm, yeah. what do you do? Well, we better do this. Yeah, we gotta well change that cover because the guy, you know, <laughs> pardon me, pardon us, but the DJ over there thinks that the thinks that it should be have more artwork, you know, it should he thinks he should take you know, he should make that longer, blah blah blah, blah you know. Yeah, but it's, it, so then much it's not your journey. You know, it could drive you it could yeah. drive you crazy all that pressure, yeah. huh? Well that's that's absolutely right. But I mean what you're talking about now, these projects are, are your own journey and they're what you want to be doing and that's very natural and very organic. And um, yeah, you know, it's not sort of governed by figures. It's not governed by by big record labels that uh, want to have a hand in everything. It's governed by you and what you feel is right. And I think that's a really natural way to make music. That's the, and that's the best. And I'm and and you know what? When you make it that way, it just kind of, it just flows. I mean, mm, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. You did okay. a, an appearance on American Idol and America's Got Talent um, in, in recent times. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that and how that came about? Uh, well, that was like a, what, a few years ago, really, yeah. actually. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was back a little bit. Yeah. But uh, anyway, how it came about was... Um, they have, I think, a, at that time on the on the American Idol, they were having a disco show for the for the uh, finalists, I think. Yes. And they did, uh, uh, and I think that's that's how that came about. Wonderful. And they wanted uh, to have some people from that era on the show, and uh, on uh, on the um, uh, America's Got Talent. I'm not quite sure how that came about, but it was fun <laughs> uh, doing that. How they how they took that one song and made and and made it interact with every single act they had on there, including including da uh, uh, what do you call them the dancers, uh, uh, the Irish dancers, cloggers. Oh yes, yeah. Yeah. the cloggers. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, yeah. That's that's just great. That's just lovely to hear. And um, the last thing really is to give you an opportunity to tell the listeners about your website and if you're on Twitter and Facebook and just tell listeners how to contact you and uh, you know, wh where your music is for them to buy and, uh, and so on. Which is the most important part. 
Absolutely. And Hello? if there's anything more you'd Which like... Which is the most important part. <laughs> yes. And, I, and I, I just know it's on Thelma Houston... Um, you know what? You have to. I have to get that. I have to let. I have to let Chip send that to you. That's no problem at all. We can. We can make sure that that's uh, on our website anyway. Um, and um, well, basically, if you wanted to tell us a little bit more about Forty Two, and um, if, if there was any any more information you wanted to give us, then please feel free to say hi. Well, I just want everybody. Just I just I just really would really. Um, uh, like the people to take a listen, and it's 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 a different um, uh, uh, sound than than um, than people may be uh, accustomed to hearing me. F- what happens is once you get a, a known for something, uh, one type of of genre, uh, then it's kind of hard to come out of that box. But uh, a lot of people don't know that I was making song. You know, I was singing. Um, you have been recording all kinds of of music uh before the don't leave me this way and uh i you know just like them take a listen to where i'm at right now and we're gonna we're getting ready to do the second part of it um that should be coming coming out in a few months um and it's going to be the second half of of uh of the ep that's out now so um so uh you know hope hope everybody loves it i'm I'm so happy that people are responding in a positive way to it. I really appreciate it and thank you so very much and uh I believe it is it's thelma it's uh i think it's forty two you know what i i I don't want to give the wrong information i i'm I'm so terrible with the Twitter and the Facebook and the tweeting and the <laughs> it's all not a of problem, that. so we can we can communicate <laughs> all that. All of that, but I know it's so necessary. <laughs> yeah, we, you know. we can communicate that. That's no problem at all, Thelma. Absolutely. But yeah, but it is. But I mean, but but we are we're hooked up to all of that. You can tweet us and 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 Twitter us or what is it? Tweet us. Tweet. Yes, tweeting. <laughs> yeah. Are you Wonderful. a tweeter, DJ? Yes, we we uh, have several uh, Twitter accounts. We have the main Twitter account from the station. Because I guess people, because yeah. because your show, people tweet out to you. Do they tweet? I mean, tweet tweet out to you. Do they tweet uh, you when you're doing your show? Yes, yeah. We we even get tweeted requests during the show. And, See, that's and, a, yeah, that's important. Yeah. yeah, that's why it's so important to do that. Yeah, and we're if not, you want to stay live. Yeah, we're we're not one of these radio stations that's that's um, all pre-recorded like a lot of the really big ones. You know, if we get a request, we can play it. We can, you know, the DJs are live; they can drop it into the middle of the show. It's not a problem. Oh, at all. that's great. Yeah, so. I love that. That that's like nothing like live radio. Well, we believe that the new way of doing radio is much like the old way, in as much as we play music from DJs that have a passion for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I nothing like that. That's what I. Now you know. I, that's I really miss that part of it when um, I, I remember back in the day when we would go to all the radio stations and meet the DJs and they play your play your stuff. You know, when you when you have new product out. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. And then then it start then it started becoming where everything was like on automatic. <laughs> That's right. Well, Thelma, when the second and half then, of your EP comes out, come and talk to us again, and we can do that. We, you know, we can. We oh, can I would love do to do live. that. We can perhaps do it live. I even. would love to do that. Hell okay. <laughs> All right. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. If there's anything else you'd like to tell your fans here uh, in the UK and across the world, because we're a global radio station, um, please feel free to do so. And I have to say, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. And well, thank you so much. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm looking forward. To, uh, this is what I want to say. I'm looking forward to coming there soon. Uh, you know, I was just there. It's probably about maybe three three years ago, maybe. I was there when they did the Mo, they had the Motown um band over the guys that played uh played at all the that that played the songs of the Motown yes uh on the Motown songs I was I did a tour with them wonderful and uh we did we did those uh, Odeon theaters and I did uh I can't think of the name of this one club that we were there and uh they had almost like a question and answer kind of thing it was great it's really great that sounds yeah. really great. Sounds but like, you know, my my those the, those fans, I'm telling you, uh, they're loyal. Um, once once you once people admire, you know, like your work, you know, uh, in England, uh, I found that to be so true uh, on the on the um, international level uh, more than more than here in the states. But if you're known, if you have a name, people will support you. 
and uh, you know, unless you, you know, as long as you stay true, true to what you do, or, or you know, uh, being a, an honest approach to your music, yeah. they'll they'll continue to support you. And I really appreciate that. And I want to thank thank all the fans. Uh, in fact, I don't. I that word fan. I you know, I like it, but it's it just sounds so flighty. I I, I prefer to call them supporters because if you don't have the support of people, then you know. Yeah. It, 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 nothing is going to work. So to all of those that have supported me over the years, I, I, I please, I really appreciate you so very, very much. I really do, and I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, soon, I hope. We're looking forward to seeing you too, Thelma, and we, we appreciate you and your music so very much indeed. And uh, I am honoured to have spoken to you this afternoon here in the UK, which is morning where you are. And um, when the other half of your EP comes out, I'd love to talk to you again if you have the time. Well, thank you so much, and I certainly will do that. Wonderful. You have an absolutely okay. blessed and beautiful day. And um, Thank you, and happy holidays, everybody. And happy holidays. Yep, fantastic. Take care, Thelma, and uh, we'll speak very, very soon. Thank you very much. Indeed. Okay. You take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.